am actually on site today. If you are listening, not watching, I'm standing in front of a large river of water right now, and you might hear the sound. That's a little waterfall going by. I'm right next to the side of the road, so there'll be cars going by occasionally too, like right there. But I'm doing that because we're in, I'm in California, and normally uh, we're in drought conditions, but there's an old dry creek bed near the cabana where Nance and I live and is overflowing with water right now. And it's because we have been visited by what is called an atmospheric river. I sent a song to my family today, old man, atmospheric river. It's a wonderful song, but I don't have time to sing it to you. I'm doing this because we're talking about habits, which is really about life change. But I wanted to get habits out of the category they're often in for folks of just behavioral modification or some kind of secular or psychological technique to be able to exercise better or get my finances in shape. No, 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 no. Jesus talked about how there are available to us rivers of living water that can be flowing out of our belly that just as the God who created the earth and all of its magnificence brings water to uh, bring things back to life. So God is present spiritually. And our habits are a very important part of that. So we're going to be thinking a lot about habits in the days to come. I want to take a moment and think about them from a spiritual perspective. Habits were created by God. Habit is a gift of God. And if I was going to uh, define a habit from a spiritual or theological perspective, I would put it like this. A habit is a kingdom extender. And here's what I mean. You were made by God to exercise dominion, to be able to um, have influence and impact for good. That goes all the way back to the beginning of Genesis. God makes us in his image and says, let them reign, let them rule, let them have power. Now, where does that start? That starts with your body. Your body is the beginning of your kingdom. That's the part of all of created matter where your will can hold sway. How does that work? Well, initially it's very limited and very laborious. You look at a little child and when they learn how to walk, they have to concentrate on it with their full attention. But then over time, their body learns how to walk on its own. We outsource uh, the task of walking to our body as a habit. And we do that with driving and we do that with talking and we do that with dressing ourselves. So that habits are always about freedom and they're always about power. Anytime somebody's going to lead an organization, the way that you lead is you delegate. You have more and more people who come under your sphere of influence and you delegate to them the authority, the power, the ability to do things under your overall sway. Well, the place where that starts is our body. Habits are the way that we delegate powers to our body to enable us to think and do increasingly complex and wonderful and fruitful and good things. Thank God for habits. There is great gift. But precisely because they're so powerful, they can be extremely destructive when they go south, when they become negative. And of course, what has happened to us is sin has gotten into our habits. Now, this is precisely what the Apostle Paul is writing about when he writes in Romans, the seventh chapter, starting at verse 22, for in my inner being, as I think about this, that part of me that's unseen, I delight in God's law and what is good in being a person of integrity and love and so, but I see another law at work in the members of my body, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within my members. Now, what are the members of your body? Well, that's just the parts of your body. That's your eyes and your tongue and your hands. And the problem is that in the habits that we outsource to our eyes, what do I see when I look at people? Sin has gotten into that. So I see people uh, according to the flesh. Some are attractive and I want to be nice to them and others look uninteresting or dull. And my tongue is ready to gossip. It's ready to self-promote. It's ready to deceive. My feet are ready to run away from trouble instead of courageously facing it. My hands are ready to type emails that are filled with um, self-promotion or cruelty or sarcasm. Um, and that's exactly, the, the Bible understands 
God understands because God created them. Jesus is the master of habit. And so when we look at change, this very deeply involves coming to grips with habit. This is just fascinating. I wanted to read this for you. This is from a neuro researcher, Christian Northrup, who writes, not only do our physical organs control receptor sites for neurochemicals of thought and emotion, our organs and immune systems can themselves manufacture these same chemicals. What this means is our entire body feels and expresses emotion. All parts of us think and feel the mind is located throughout the body. The mind is located throughout the body. And so what needs to happen if we are going to be spiritually transformed is we need to change at the level of our habits. I'll quote one more person, uh, Dallas Willard, in his book, The Divine Conspiracy, quite famously has a long section on what he calls a curriculum for Christ-likeness. He says, uh, that process of transformation, that curriculum will always have two parts. One is to enthrall the mind and heart with love for God, how good God is and how much God loves me. But then the second objective, he says, is to remove our automatic responses against the kingdom of God, to free us from domination or enslavement to the old habitual patterns of thought, feeling, and action. These are the automatic patterns of response that have been grounded into the embodied self during its long life outside of the kingdom among us. They make up the sin that is in my members, which, hey guys, which as Paul so brilliantly understood, brings it about that wishing to do the good is mine, but not the doing of it. Very little of our being lies under the direction of our conscious mind. The training that leads to doing what we hear from Jesus must therefore involve first the purposeful disruption of our automatic thoughts, feelings, and actions by doing different things with our body. And then through various intentional practices, we place the body before God in such a way that the whole self is retrained away from habits of the old kingdom. In other words, spiritual formation is habit formation. So now today, I want to give you one habit. And it is incredibly easy. It's a modification of a habit talked about by B.J. Fogg in his book, Tiny Habits. You can do this. We will learn as we work on habits that one of the biggest problems is if we try to change too much too fast, grandiosity does not serve us. The desire for instant gratification, instant change doesn't help us. We have to be humble, one little habit at a time. And so this one involves the very first thing you do when you get up in the morning. And what I want you to do, as long as we're doing this series together, when you first wake up, you got to wake up anyhow. When your feet hit the ground, pause and say, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And then smile. And then take two or three seconds of pause to reflect on that statement. Because simply trying to program our minds is of no use if the thoughts are just hype, if they are not true, if they're not embedded in reality. So when you wake up tomorrow morning and then the next morning, you can say it right now. This is the day the Lord has made. Now, this is true. I didn't make this day. You didn't make this day. It came from somewhere. It is his day. It is his gift to me. I'm alive today. I will rejoice and be glad in this day. That is a good thought to start the day with. That invites God. That sets my intention. And you can do this. And then that's one little habit under your belt. It's very small. It takes five seconds. And I'll give you one modification for it. It may be that you're going through a horrendous time. 
part of why I have needed to add so many habits to my life over the last couple of years as so much of other infrastructure has been really difficult or circumstances have. So if you're facing a day and there's great suffering, and I know for some of you there is, then you can add this word. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it somehow. I don't know how now. I know there's going to be problems. Not sure what to do. Somehow. It's a tiny little habit, but you can do this. And, and then you will have that sense of, I have done it. I have taken one small step. And the encouragement of having a habit work, get embedded, is fundamentally important to what we're going to be doing. So, that's it for today. God is the giver of habits. Habits are the process of delegating to our bodies the task of life so that we can exercise dominion. Habits are kingdom extenders. Habits are great blessings. Habits are also huge problems when sin gets into them. We are on the journey together of habit reformation so that increasingly we can be free and effortlessly do what God calls us to do. But we only do this one tiny little step at a time. Tomorrow morning, when you get up, do not pick up your phone. Don't start scrolling through. Don't be overwhelmed by all the difficult. My feet hit the ground. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And then smile. Spiritual growth is habit forming. Hi, I'm Tim. Thanks for joining us. You mean so much to us as a community, and we hope that this series helps you build some new habits in your life to help you grow spiritually one day at a time. And we want to hear from you throughout this series. If you have questions, you can put them in the comment box wherever you're watching, or you can email us or text us. And at the end of the series, we're going to sit down with John and talk about some of your questions. For more resources, you can visit becomenew.me. And to spread the word, you can hit subscribe, share this video with a friend, or give us a review on podcasts wherever you're listening. We'll see you next time.